Yeah, I'm delighted to say I'm joined again by the man who's become a bit of a regular here, McLean's TV, uh, Warren Finney, Linfield boss. And since I last spoke to you, you've been over now getting your pro license, and by all accounts, you know, over there, McLean's is even famous over there. Tell us about that. Yeah, I'm over, obviously, you know, doing my pro license because I need it, you know, for managing Linfield in Europe. But part of the course is a media course, um, and one of the tasks was to do an interview. Senate to Bryn Law, the famous Sky Sports presenter. Um, and Bryn goes away, looks at it, see where you went ro wrong, where you went right. You have a one-to-one -one with him. And um, it was interesting because the one I took was after a Ballon Mallard game where it was a bit aggressive towards us playing two games in two days. But the one he picked was the one off McLean's. He'd done a bit of research himself and he thought it was relaxed. It was, you know, sitting having a coffee way as if it was a friend chatting. And it was good to compare the both. So, you know, it's good that McLean's have made Sky Sports. <laughs> was he impressed with Logie? Yeah. Any work? <laughs> he was very impressed, Logie, but he says you're up to your eyes too much these days. Um, but no, so not was pleasing. Well, now, look, you're talking about football too and things change week in, week out. Again, the Irish League shows itself the Premiership to be a great league. Anyone can beat anyone in this league. Definitely. It's, you know, it's a big... Um, it's a big league, big for teams at the moment. You know, there's there's one of four teams at the moment, and there's a wee gap from um, fourth and fifth. But as I say, that all goes out the window. You know what I mean? You've got to keep momentum. You've got to keep winning. I think the last time we spoke, we were fourth or fifth in the league. Now we're up to second. Um, but you know, I don't get too carried away because there's some great teams in there. It's coming into a busy period of Christmas, and you know we've just got to concentrate on our sales. But you know, it's a great campaign for the league, great campaign for the fans. And it's going to be an exciting one, which I still think will go the whole way to the, um, the last game of the season. I watched you a few times recently, you know, and I've been impressed with you, you know, and, and the, the way you seem to be trying to play football. But dare I say it, some of the Linfield fans, they're hard to please, Warren. Yeah, you know, I've, I've learned that, to be honest, of, of fans in my whole career in England as well. But yes, yeah, I said, it's, I knew that before coming to this job, that, listen, there's going to be a lot of pressure on me. But, you know, I'm not one who looks at it that way. I know what I'm talking about in football-wise. And... You know, fans have their vocal, but saying that on Saturday, they were fantastic the last 10 minutes getting in when, you know, we had to dig in, we had to fight. And yes, you're going to have your ups and downs in the season, your moans and groans, but I've just got to protect those players and concentrate what I've got in that changing room. And, you know, the players are buying into it. And I think, looking at it, you know, they're showing a bit of fight, they're showing a bit of pride for that shirt, which is what you want as a fan. And um, that's what pleases me lately with the players. You know, we've dug into games and we've got the right results. Some, yes, we want to play football, but there's times when you've got to roll your sleeves up. We've certainly done that, and I think the fans appreciated that on Saturday. Are you worried about the expectancy levels of the Linfield supporters? Because, you know, you come off the David Jeffrey era uh, where you seem to win everything, you know, and you're always nailed on to be favourites here, favourites there. Then you come in, I remember reading Liam Beck at the start of the season, says, give Warren Feeney a chance. Mm -hmm. But yet, as you say, you're second in the league. The expectancy levels are still there with every Blues fan, aren't they? Oh, they're definitely, you know, that's that's what comes with this club and playing for this club, managing this club especially, but, you know, I'd, I'd have it no other way. I said to the players after the game on Saturday, you know, I've been to a few games this season and watched a few teams. No disrespect to them. Um, you know, I think the, the rise and the raise their games, they challenge us. And I said, you know, you look at Real Madrid, week in, week out, you know, everyone wants to beat them. They've got the best players in the world, yes, but teams raise their games to play them and they go even higher. And I think that's what we've got to expect with Linfield because the pressure that comes with this job and playing for that shirt is, you know, it's something that the players have got to take on whenever they, they, they play for this club. And they're certainly doing that at the moment. And yes, we're sitting in a good position, but I won't get carried away because I know how quick football can change. And, um, you know, as I say, I've got to get the boys concentrated now for the next five, six months. And um, I'm, I'm, we're going very confidently along. And um, I think, you know, we'll be there or thereabouts at the end of the season. I want to ask you a question. You know, there's been a wee bit of speculation, certainly over the English Premiership. You know, some of the foreign managers, including, you know, uh, Van Gaal with United and a few others are saying that they can't believe the busy schedule that they have in England over the winter period, over the Christmas holiday period. It's very, very difficult for yourselves as amateur sportsmen too. It's a serious schedule. Should there be a break? It's a tough one because when I was professionally in England, I loved the Christmas period. But, you know, I looked a while ago, the last time I was here, I was saying about the two games in two days for part-time players. And to go and ask them for 20, I think it's the 26th, the 28th, the 1st and the 3rd. 
you know, it's incredible really for part-time players and, you know, it's not something that I've really had in my career winter break, but it would probably be interesting to sit down and discuss it um, and see what points there is from it. But, you know, there's a, a lot, a lot of games you're asking for part-time players to play over that Christmas period and that's why I think you need big squads. And unfortunately at the moment we have a couple of injuries, I'm hoping to have a few fit, but you know, it is, it's a, it is a big ask for players, I think, to, over that Christmas period. You talk about part-time, you know, and the, the discipline for the team. Uh, part-time, okay, playing the game, but they have to be professional in their outlook and in their approach because they can't go out and party and enjoy themselves over Christmas the way everybody else can. No, not at all. It's, it's interesting because I think this will be only my second out of 18 years I won't be in Christmas Day. Um, I was in all Christmas days, used it even sometimes in hotels at Christmas night, you know, would meet up, have our dinner with our families, um, go into training at four o'clock and then straight off the hotel preparing for the game and, and boxing day and yes, you've got to be very disciplined. Um, no, you know, every one sees it as a, you know, a, a time to spare with your families and go and have a beer and relax, but you know, football at the end of the day, I say to my players, one thing I learned, there's times and places to do it and you know there's nothing better at the end of that season being disciplined looking back with a bit of silverware saying that you know I took a sacrifice over that time um, and I've got the rewards now and I think you know it's a busy busy time that one you seriously have to be disciplined for your players but as I say that's why the best players in the world um, at the best clubs are so disciplined because you know I've met players in England that would have a beer at the start of the season and pre-season they wouldn't have a drink again until maybe Christmas a glass of wine that's it and that's discipline but you know that's why they're at the top and we try to do things right at Linfield with recoveries analysis I want to make them as professional as I can I said that from day one and to be fair there's a very good group there who have no worries um, over this Christmas period especially that they'll be very disciplined with what's going into their bodies. You talk about uh, only the second time in 18 years that uh, <laughs> you'll not be working on Christmas day but you'll be working on Boxing Day and the uh, I know I'm not taking to be I'm not trying to be disrespectful to all the other uh, clubs in the league, but for someone who was involved here in sport for a long, long time, it it was the big clash, you know, the big two, Boxing Day. You have to look forward to that one now. I tell you, when you see all these, do you, whatever you achieve before that will count for nothing if uh, Eddie Patterson the boys beat the three <laughs> 0 Oh, definitely, <laughs> especially being an East Belfast man uh, myself. I found that over there, <laughs> but um, I wouldn't have it no other way. You know, it's a great game. I remember going as a kid. And one always stuck out in my mind was the time it snowed. And uh, I think the the orange ball got lost or burst and they're only a white ball. <laughs> and they um, they had to play in the snow with away football. I said, you know what adds extra to the Boxing Day game? <laughs> um, and to be honest, I couldn't see the ball in the stand. Um, never mind the players on the pitch. But, you know, as I say, it's a great time for the fans. It's I've no doubt whatsoever it'll be a sellout at, at, at Windsor. Um, the big two, yes, no disrespect to no one else, but it is the big two. Uh, and as I say, it's one that you know we'll we'll be getting very confident, um, like we do to every game. But you know, with two games before that to worry about, and I'm sure Eddie will be the same. Now you're here basically almost halfway through the season. Your reflections on the Irish League, the quality of the Irish League, is it better than what you you, you thought it would be? Is it worse, or is it just what you thought it would be? And your overall opinion of uh, the Danske Bank Premiership? No, I, I knew it would be tough. As I said, you know, I'm a big follower of it. Um, and, you know, any of the games that were on the TV, I used to try and watch. And, um, you know, the games on the news, I like to get highlights and, you know, done my research on it 100%, even before I got the job. But, you know, had a few DVDs coming over of Linfield. And I know, know what the league's about. It's, you know, it's physical and teams do try and play some of them and some of them strong. But, no, you know, knowing the football, you've just got to believe in what you want with your players. Um, and, yes, it's been tough, um, you know, probably in a transitional period with us. And I've seen some players come back from England, but they're starting to find their feet now, which I think is a very important time. And looking at some of the other teams, you know, they'll be saying the same. They'll be every confidence in their own ability to go on and, and get silverware this season like us. And it wasn't my expectations of what the league um, was. You know, at, at every doubt, it was going to be a physical, a hard league. And it's it certainly showed that. Can you win the league? You're halfway through. You have a better idea now. You've seen the teams. You've seen the quality. You've seen the opposition. I set targets, yes, but you know I don't like tempting fate or I don't like looking too far ahead. I just take one game at a time. But you know I'm sure you ask any of the 
managers in the top five, six, they'll be saying the exact same. Um, yes, we can win the league, but you know, at the end of the day, hopefully, hopefully come the end of the season, um, you can ask me again, Adrian, I'll give you a proper answer. Warren, I have to say to you, uh, I enjoy the Irish League football and uh, I've known you for a long time. I have to say to you, very straight and honesty here, now you've been a, a breath of fresh air to come into the Irish League. I wish you all the very, very best and I wish you a very happy Christmas. Thank you. Love. No worries.